Hello from Level Up 2021. Hello from Berlin. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining the presentation. I will talk today about self publishing toolkit, what you need for shipping a hit mobile game. With Starberry, we just self published and globally launched a game. First, just an introduction of me and Starberry. So I'm Antti Hattara and come from the land of mobile games, Finland. I've been making casual games for the past 16 years. I started at Digital Chocolate in Helsinki. Uh, I did product management. And about 10 years ago, I moved to Berlin. Uh, I started as, at Wuga as a head of studio. The biggest game we built in, in the studio was Jelly Splash. And four years ago, I started um, Chatterbox Games, my own company. We did games for Facebook Messenger. And we pivoted that quite quickly after it to make games for the app stores. And we also renamed the company Starberry. With Starberry, we've developed a game called Idle Coffee Corporation. It's something that was published by Boombit. It's got over 8 million downloads to date. Uh, we've since raised venture capital funding from Play Ventures, Buy Founders, and some angels. And with the funds, we've developed and self-published the game Merge Mayer. Okay, so let's jump right into it. I want to define a bit of the topic of today, self-publishing and toolkit. With self-publishing, I'm refining it to free to play. So naturally something that you're distributing over the app stores on your own accounts. And the key thing is also that you're on free to play is that you're operating the game as a service. So you're doing operations like marketing, user acquisition, uh, basing it on analytics and business intelligence, and then also direct to consumer interfaces like support and customer insights. With Toolkit, I mean tools and services that are available for, for mobile game developers, for smaller games companies to develop and self-publish games. So at Starberry, we are a fairly small company. We develop casual games that take more months than years to develop. And at the start of the journey, we were more of a mobile games development team with nine developer, developers in the team and, and me as the CEO doing pretty much all of the publishing activities. We didn't have too much of an existing uh, technology for publishing. Earlier, we had used something from, from the publisher with Idle Coffee Corporation. I'll also make references to Merge Mayer. It's the game we developed over the last 16 months, including a pivot from more idle game mechanic to merge game mechanic. We launched the game globally on 15th of April, and we've since then been scaling the game profitably with user acquisition. At that same time, the team grew from 10 to 19, and we've added key positions into the publishing organization of the company. I'll go through three stages. The concept stage, including the tech launch, that's took us about seven months. The production stage, including the soft launch, which took us about nine months. And then finally global launch. And this time I will leave live ops to some other time as we're just entering the stage with the company. So jumping on into the concept and tech launch, the early phase. And the publishing tool you might be looking at this stage are something related to market research and customer insights. Market research is something the tools should be there to guide you in terms of the decision what game to make uh, for the market. So we use tools like Apani to estimate the market size, follow the trends, and benchmark against competitive game competition. There's also Geek Lab, something you can use for testing your concept, theme, or art style, where you're doing actual marketing in real channels but then directing the users to a simulated app store landing page to check the, the audience appeal. Here's an example of Geek Lab theme test we did. This is more, we tested a bit broader merge ideas just to also test the testing, but it's something where it's good to test as an insurance. So you're not necessarily looking for the best concept and thinking you'll find the winner here, but for me, this is perspective is more about checking sanity check or insurance that the idea that you want to do isn't for some reason performing the worst. Because if that's the case, then you should look more into it. 
and test maybe some more. Moving on to customer insights. Uh, this is something where you want to know more about how players are interacting with your game and who your audience is, more detail into it. Uh, so we use Playtest Cloud for usability testing. We also do tests with competitors' games to get gain more insight. Another tool that might be not as well known is Smart Look. It's real-time uh, user re recordings of your actual players. It's something that's really nice for multi-session tests and to see how users progress in your game. Additionally, 12 Traits is a tool that we use for getting an idea of what our, who our players are and how beyond the demographic. So they do psychological questionnaires inside the game that you can incentivize with in-game currency and you'll gain a lot of information of who your audience is. Here's just an example of the Smart Look dashboard. So it's your actual players. Screens are recorded at two frames per second and you'll get the, that from, from the, the actual players. Uh, they don't record any of the system dialogues, and you should actually prompt a opt-in login with a dialogue with the user in the beginning for tracking. So here's an example of 12 traits, a tool we were using. With them, we crafted a custom audience where we simulated kind of our future audience, that what could it be and what would they appreciate and value. Uh, we're, we've since then also done this, implemented the questionnaire in our own game, so we're actually learning about our real audience, what they value uh, based on their answers on the questionnaire. Moving on to the tech launch phase where way more publishing action starts to happen. And there's just a simple set of tools that I think everyone should be using to test the games as early as possible in the market. Google Open Beta, Facebook Ads, and any basic analytics tool. So let's look into these. Google Open Beta is really good. It's super simple to set up. You'll, your game will stay under the radar. It's not discovered by tools like Appani. And the best part is that it's compatible with just standard UA. You can actually buy normal install ads and, and get installs for your game. Customers will be only able to send you feedback with the Google Console tool. They won't be able to re leave public reviews. So that's also really nice. And as the game doesn't appear in search or any of the categories, there's really almost no organic traffic as well. So your tests stay fairly, fairly clean. Now that you've got your game in available, you want to drive some traffic. Facebook ads is definitely the simplest tool for doing that. It's great. It works even with a small budget, for example, anything like a hundred euros in the Western markets. It drives the right installs with a cost-effective price. It's something that everyone should be able to, to use to set up the campaigns. Um, so then you of course need also the creative, the ad creative. That's also simple to do. So we use 30 second gameplay videos. Um, you can also use of course screenshots in a banner carousel, but anything pretty much you can just capture from your game on your device and even edit directly there. I've been using an app called Splice app to, to edit the videos. It includes a nice library of sound effects and also transition effects. With uh, Facebook ads, we were able to drive quality users in the UK to merge Mayer with really nice price of 35 cents per user when we started the tech launch. After you've got users in your early version of the game, you also want to measure it and see the performance indicators, how players are actually doing. You can use any, pretty much any of the tools available, Facebook, Google, uh, Firebase, Unity, or Game Analytics to, to measure the very essential metrics, day one to day three retention, the early retention, or engagement and progression in the game of the players. So here's just examples of our merge mayor in the early stage, very early. We had pretty much only one day of enjoyable game there. We saw how users progressed through the levels. And what's missing from here is the engagement that actually gave us nice confidence to continue as it was somewhere around 40 minutes per day, uh, as the game really didn't have any blockers. So that's also something that impacted the retention. So the 
tech launch of Merge Mayor, we pivoted from idle to merge. We tested on idle. We saw the metrics and, and we decided to go from just a small merge component into full screen merge. And as you can see, we went from not so great metrics on retention to really awesome metrics that were giving a, indicating quite a lot of potential. And in the same, same time, we kept also a nice effective price per user or price per install. So that helped us then to get confidence and green light and go move on to full production. That's the next mode, the production and soft launch. We consider that we're actually developing the game during the soft launch. So it's kind of an early compared to others in the industry, I would say. You'll need to build some basics uh, when you kind of decide to move on. So upgrading your basic analytics with a proper analytics stack and also implementing attribution. These are the key tools. For analytics stack, it's kind of a data warehouse solution. You can either look into using Google BigQuery, build it yourself, do all the data engineering there, or you can use services like Delta DNA, which we tested, where they do more of the, the backend and you just operate it, the analytics. Or you can look into full services like the dive games can pretty much build and operate a lot of the analytics for you. You'll need this because you fairly quickly, as you're developing the game, you've got more advanced questions. So you want to know custom queries. You want to know in-depth product metrics, how the game works. And ultimately, you'll need to do this foundation so that in the further stages, you're able to use your data effectively for optimizing UA, UA or, or operating live ops. For attribution, that's there's no way around it. You'll just need it. You will need to know where your installs are coming from and attribution will attribute the installs. So there's only a few options available today in the market. Uh, every one of them has starter plans. So it's really easy to get started with. And you just, you should integrate that fairly early on. We've been happy with AppsFlyer, their product, um, and moving on with, with that. So after you've got the foundations, the analytics stack, the attribution, you've probably developed the game a little bit further. It's got engagement and you're ready, you won't be resetting user progression or doing radical changes. Uh, you could look into monetization and then expanding marketing. On monetization, there's two key tools to use. First, the in-app receipt validation, which helps you to keep your data clean so that you can trust the metrics for purchases so that you, you can use your time effectively, effectively when you're looking at data. You can either build it yourself or you can use available services like I think all of the attribution tools include this as part of their paid plans. Then you should be looking into ad monetization. That's easy to implement early on. We've been using Iron Source mediation. We integrated that with many of the other ad sources, and we've been really happy. Uh, it's something where it's effective to set up. Their integration with AppsFlyer is great, and I've been very happy at looking at the cohort-based ad LTV. So that's been an easy tool to use. So when you're expanding marketing, that's the next stage. This is where you want to start using multiple channels outside of Facebook ads. So Google, Unity, or any of the networks. You might also want to include new countries into your soft launch. You're going to be experimenting with campaign types like app install campaigns and everything to purchase campaigns or event optimized campaigns, iterating creatives. And all of these add a lot of workload. That's pretty much a full-time job. So you'll need to either look into an in-house marketing manager, or there are also agencies that do this as a full service and, and you can pay for that. At this point, we brought on marketing director into the company to tackle the workload. Because in this case, as you're adding more tools, you're actually increasing the workload. So the soft launch stage of Merge Mayor, we 
we're achieving really nice long-term retention as displayed in the graph. Uh, we implemented monetization fairly late on, uh, but it really showed promising return on ad spent. And we were making 50-50 split on ads and IAP. We believe the ads were quite nicely optimized due to the bidding and waterfall setup we are running on iron source. And that's leading to a really high eCPM and making the ads really worth our time. We've also then expanded with marketing to Google and Unity, and we added Canada as one of the soft launch countries. With these metrics, we were then confident to proceed towards global launch. So that's the final stage. And as mentioned, live ops, I'll leave to another time. With global launch, that's the time when you start scaling your product. So you can either approach it with going at one global launch day, kind of the traditional way, or you can go at it by rolling out market by market. Also another tool that you might be then looking after it is UA credits, UA loans for being able to scale your user acquisition. So global launch day is the way we went, the traditional way. It's nicely fit for applying for promotion or featuring in the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. It's something where you can get a nice jump start to your live operation or, you, or your user acquisition uh, scaling. So for that, when you're applying for the promotions, good thing is to check on both Google and Apple sites, their guidelines for what they wish you to do for a good product experience. They've got fairly detailed information on that. Both of them also have a online form available where you can apply for featuring and make your case why your product should be promoted. On Google, there's been a rule that you need to kind of roll out on production earlier. You need to improve your quality by having a higher score than four for your user reviews. And on Apple, product positioning and polish have been important factors for them. So with Merge Mayor, we were really nice, happy to receive some support from, from the platform partners. And we've been using app figures for tracking the placements in the app stores in different categories and subcategories. And as you can see, Idle Coffee is still featured. So you can see the promotion that can happen over and over again. User acquisition scaling is, needs deep pockets. It's capital intensive and it especially depends on the payback window. The longer it is, the more capital you have tied in to your user acquisition. Nice tools, an alternative for raising money against equity is the UA credits or UA funding loans. There's been a few of these already in the market. They've been more of the revenue based where you get loans based on your trailing revenue. So the kinds of uncapped Polens, Bravos have been on the market. Now there st starts to be data-driven models where they're looking more in depth into your ROAS graphs and LTV model models. So then you can get those loans quicker. This is something we're looking on, on at the moment. With Merch Mayor, we launched and rolled out globally on 15th of April. We got prominent featuring on the App Store. And as you can see on the iOS graph, it's, there's a jump on revenue right from the get-go. We did release the app globally, but we actually focused UA to U US market and other English speaking markets. We'll be next expanding the channels to other geos. And the graphs also show kind of our situation at the moment with fairly nice payback times. So we're looking to scale the game in the future. And now next step is for us to look into live ops toolkit. And here's how the game looked at global launch. So you have idle merge, merge core mechanic with idle city, city building meta, meta game. And just to summarize, here's our self-publishing toolkit. You've got the tools in the early tech launch phase for market research or customer insight. You've got the essential part for the tech, making the tech launch. So Google open beta, 
any analytics tool and the Facebook ads. You'll be then moving on to production, hopefully, and that's where you should be looking into building your fundamentals. So analytics stack and attribution tools into use, and then beyond that, implementing monetization, like the receipt validation and ad mediation, and then expanding marketing with other channels and tools. Finally, then in global launch, choosing your approach. If you're going with the launch day, traditional approach, looking into the app store timelines, the, the guidelines and, and preparing yourself for, for that. And when things are looking good in terms of return on ad spend, then scaling your game with, with UA funding and the tools that are available for it. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.